Shalom and good day, this is Tehillim29 back again for manga I have recently read through uh, between the months of December 2023 into January 2024 and I must admit it's been really good reading some more material or some more content from Naoki Urasawa and this is practically my second lot of manga uh, which is a whole collected series the next one i want to work on reading through is the 20th century boys including volume 12 12 which is called the 21st century boys to which there's only about 12 volumes to the series so this covers what i've read through in relation to the series called Master Keaton, to which there are 12 volumes. And I must admit, uh, some of these volumes I got through my main LCS. Um, others I had to get from other places, including um, some online shopping. And it did take a while for me to get them, but it was actually worth um, taking my time to read from. Now, one difference between this... Naoki Urasawa that I've read here is that this one has more volumes compared to my first series that I read through which was called Pluto and if it's one thing about this series it's got a little bit more content around the main character in the story but we also do follow some other characters in the story such as um, his daughter that he has, and also some of the things that she is involved in, including some things at school. Moving into the next series that I ended up reading through, uh, to which I'll probably have to get a hold of volume three whenever I can, and that is Under Ninja, and when this story sort of starts, we're sort of like brought at the point to which we see... The beginning of like a crime scene being investigated but then we're introduced a little bit after that to the person who is actually the ninja uh, in the story and what they do is to sort of like get jobs of course we have tokyo babylon which um even though i've heard that there's more volumes to it i think i might give this story a little bit longer to ferment like with further volumes before i will give a rating on the volume um but i might leave uh maybe further ratings on the volume when i manage to get more volumes next is only ronin which with this one you end up reading um left to right not right to left <laughs> Then we have Trojan X. Of course, there is a couple of graphic, oh, small graphic novels in here that are about the rough size of manga of this size. Uh, I think is sometimes I do get quite a number of them, and the only place to put them is actually with these groups. Of course, we have the Robin, which I reread re through. Uh, I'd still say the same thing again, even though I've reread it. Uh, this sort of feels like if Bruce Wayne ended up getting Damien Wayne as the second Robin. And um, the Nightwing is, of course, still Dick Grayson. Then we have Arcade Kings, which was actually quite interesting. It reminded me a little bit like um, Street Fighter in some parts, but it also had like some wrestling type motives as well within the story but yes there was also like proper uh, arcade related parts within the story definitely worth the recommendation uh the hundredth voice 
this is another interesting graphic novel that I picked up. And one of the things that sort of like grabbed my attention is the synopsis of the story. Um, only to realize that when I found out about it, it's sort of like in a way, um, a person who believes that they have a bit of a curse, but they want to get into the area of opera singing. And it's really interesting as to how that brings that story about in each chapter. Now, whether there'll be like another continuing volume to that particular series, I've got no idea. Um, even if it's a spin-off of one of the characters, it would be really nice to find out. Of course, one of the last things that I ended up finishing was the Osama Tezuka 100 Tales. To which in this Osama Tezuka 100 Tales, we do actually get an appearance of Astro Boy. But it's a story that follows the journey of basically a Japanese wanderer. Who encounters like a bit of a genie of sorts that grants him some wishes. But there are also other things that happen along in the story. Moving into Spy Family. Now this is basically an information book on Spy Family. And the characters that are connected to the series. I must admit, I'm really surprised by it. Because I learned that um, Tatsuo Endo has also worked alongside with Kazu Kato, who writes Blue Exorcist, which is actually one of my favourite manga series, uh, to which I've got quite a bit of a collection of. And I'm definitely surprised by it. And it's also nice to ha know how Kazu Kato has actually had a bit of an influence on the story of Spy Family. Last but not least, we have. Last but not least, we have the Demon Slayer Corpse Records. Now, this too is also like a bit of a information or a character information uh, type of manga book, and in it we do learn about each of the characters that make up the Demon Slayer Corpse, as well as not just the main characters, but also the villains. So now it's time for me to move directly into the area of the rating of each of these manga volumes, which I've been reading through. So for the first four volumes, I think I'll start off with this in regards to Master Keaton. I give a, I give an eight out of 10. For the next volumes, so up to 5 to 10, which we see a little bit of each of them here, I give an 8.5 out of 10 as to how well the story uh, continued. And last but not least, we move towards the end, uh, to which I give an 8.5 out of 10. Jumping into the area of Under Ninja. Seeing I have read these first two volumes, I still want to learn more about the main character and also how they get their jobs. It almost feels a little bit like a somewhat seinen type story. Set in modern times, yes, but also how a ninja would sort of um, have to execute things in a modern environment. So for that, I give a... 7.5 out of 10, uh, definitely for some original, uh, somewhat originality in there because we've had other thing or other manga type sto stories that uh, also do the same. Um, some titles I'd actually like to get would be uh, Naburi Ono, that would be one, and Shinobi no Itoki, uh, to which I have watched both of the anime of. But I would also love to collect the manga of. Next is Tokyo Babylon, to which I give a 7.5 out of 10. So a bit of an average there. Only Ronin. Now, I don't think I really came across to talking about what Oni Ronin was about. In the story of Oni Ronin, we have a character which was sort of like a samurai of time. And due to 
like some certain events that happened. Um, this character returns as an Oni. So, in, in other words, he returns as a bit of a demon, but he still wants to fulfill the, the role as a bit of a ronin or samurai. For this, I give a 8 out of 10. Jumping into Chojin, uh, we are still getting some more of the story in relation to the main character and also what's happening around him. We're also starting to follow a little bit more with other characters around the character now and also some of the, their abilities that they have. So for that, a 7.5 out of 10. I still stick to my original rating for Robin uh, for the Teen Titans from the last time. Uh, with Arcade Kings, I give it a 7.5 out of 10. 100th Voice, I quite enjoyed this story, to which I give an 8 out of 10. Now, Osama Tezuka's 100 Tales, uh, 7.5 out of 10, but I did actually like seeing the appearance of Astro Boy in it. And uh, moving into the, basically the data books on Spy Family and Demon Slayer, an 8.5 out of 10 for both of them. Well, until then, let's keep it colourful and have yourself an awesome day.